Hi, I thought I'd make a quick video about what we discussed the other day regarding uh, geoman geomagnetic storms and vitamin D depletion. Here goes. This is an abstract of a study performed in 1997 regarding cosmonauts, healthy people on the ground, and cardiovascular patients on the ground during a geomagnetic storm. The functional characteristic variations during the geomagnetic storms were observed in both healthy humans and in patients with cardiovascular diseases as well as in cosmonauts at Soyuz spacecraft and Mir station. These characteristics revealed a non-specific adaptive stress reaction, which was accompanied by variations in stress hormone production rates. The neurohumoral regulation of functions during the geomagnetic storms in the patients with cardiovascular pathology and in a control group of healthy individuals were studied. The magnetic storm effect characterized of both the sick and healthy examinations was the violated ratio of glucocorticoids and mineralocorticoids, namely increases of cortisone secretion adrenal stress hormone, as well as some tendency to the activation of the sympathoadrenal system. Our investigations also revealed the suppressed production of melatonin the pineal gland hormone during the geomagnetic storm. So as you can see, a geomagnetic storm induces stress on the human body. Now the curious thing is how the body responds to this stress, how the body responds to all stress stimuli. And that is for cells to look to the DNA, their DNA library to find the proper response to the stress stimuli. As an autochrine hormone, it turns out that calcitriol, the active form of vitamin D, is a key link in the signaling mechanism in cells that matches a stimulus reaching the cell with the proper cellular response to that stimulus. More specifically, a signal stimulates a cell to perform some function, such as requiring that cell to manufacture one or more proteins to respond to the signal. Many tissues possess proteins, enzymes, and signaling molecules that exist only in virtual form which are encoded in nuclear DNA. These molecules are synthesized only on signal demand, the DNA library opens up. The required gene blueprints are found, and the molecules are created. Vitamin D is the metabolic key that unlocks the DNA library of genes, thereby allowing the required proteins and molecules to be synthesized. Depending on which researcher you consult, Vitamin D is directly involved in the expression of between 800 to 2000 such genes. Therefore, without adequate D, there is an impaired ability of cells to respond adequately to pathologic and physiologic signals. Okay, so when there's a geomagnetic storm, it induces stress uh, via increased cortisol and cortisone within the body, and every cell is now under stress every cell is accessing its DNA library looking for blueprints to deal with this problem. There is no metabolic answer to geomagnetic stress. So for the entire time of the geomagnetic storm, the cells are constantly accessing the DNA library looking for an answer. They don't stop looking for an answer, they just keep cycling and cycling. And each time they, every cell cycles, it chews up a molecule of vitamin D. And this wears down the vitamin D reserves of the body. So how does physiological stress, whether it's induced by uh, emotional stress of a loved one dying or uh, physiological stress of a geomagnetic storm, increase the risk of influenza. It, the problem is how critical vitamin D reserves are to the immune system. Vitamin D, a steroid hormone, 
has profound effects on human immunity. Vitamin D acts as an immune system modulator, preventing excessive expression of inflammatory cytokines and increasing the oxidative burst potential of macrophages. Perhaps most importantly, it dramatically stimulates the expression of potent antimicrobial peptides, which exist in neutrophils, monocytes, natural killer cells, and in epithelial cells lining the respiratory tract where they play a major role in protecting the lung from infection. Volunteers inoculated with live attenuated influenza virus are more likely to develop fever and serological evidence of an immune response in the winter. Vitamin D deficiency predisposes individuals to respiratory infections. With that in mind, you would expect that during chaotic solar periods, which result in a chaotic geomagnetic situation, the Earth's uh, magnetosphere is, is always or more disturbed than normally, you would expect for more influenza epidemics and pandemics to emerge. And that is the case. In this diagram, uh, it depicts the solar cycle, the 11 year solar cycles in blue, and the red line depicts the 100 year solar cycle. And I, the, the black lines coming straight down represent either uh, epidemics of influenza or pandemics of influenza in the late 19th century and all of the 20th century. Uh, and you can see uh, that each of the pandemics or ep epidemics came at the beginning of the 11 year cycle of the 11 year solar cycle came right in the beginning of the cycle where the sun is more chaotic. It's more chaotic during this point because it's rapidly ramping up from that minima that happened just before it. So it's like the sun is stepping on the gas and it's going through a chaotic period which induces a lot of geomagnetic storms on earth which increases the number of cases of influenza. The more cases of influenza occur, there's more mutation and recombination of influenza strains. The more mutation and reco recombination of strains there, there is, the more virulent, virulent, virulent strains emerge. And that's what drives the epidemic or pandemic situation. If you want to see something interesting, Let's look at the Spanish flu of 1918 and when that occurred and why it was so virulent. You'll note that in 1906, the 100 year Wolf Gleisberg solar cycle was in minima. Okay? And it, the 100 year cycle ramped up very quickly and during that ramp up the the Spanish flu emerged you can see in this diagram the 11 year solar cycle how high it was in relationship to the natural curve it should have been in it was extremely chaotic because it was extremely chaotic more vitamin D was chewed up less vitamin D, more influenza, more influenza, the more virulent strain emerges, and bam, you have a pandemic. I would suppose that uh, other vitamin D deficiency diseases uh, were also at elevated levels during that period. Uh, it's just we weren't monitoring them the way we do today. It was after all 1917, we were in the midst of World War One. And uh, the other interesting thing if you want to think about it is we know that ramp up that began in 1906 was very chaotic. 
and because it was the ramp up from a 100 year minima so and there was all this biological stress going on wearing down vitamin D at the same time not only you, we had the the pandemic we had World War one the fight or flight response would have been paramount absolutely paramount in response to this cortisol that was coursing through everybody so it's almost predictable that world war one would have occurred at that point because everybody was on edge it's a very interesting situation it's also very worrisome in that we're approaching the next 100 year minima in the year 2022 2023 and it'll be interesting to see what happens in the chaotic solar ramp up that occurs after that. So if things go as they did the last cycle, there will be a major war and a major pandemic in the years surrounding 200, 2028 to 2033-35. So that's something to think about. So I hope I've fully explained how geomagnetic storms uh, stress the human biology, wear down vitamin D reserves, which then leads to increased risk of uh, virulent influenza, an increase in um, vitamin d deficiency diseases during the period and most likely affects human behavior as we react to an unknown stressor uh, that we have no conscious knowledge of it's only affecting our biology so i hope you found this interesting take care now if you think i'm crazy i want to offer this abstract that was uh, written by William Burke in 1918 regarding the open air treatment of influenza. The hospital was full. They had to put people out in a field in tents. And the people in the field hospital didn't die where they were dying by droves in the general hospital. Okay? And the doctor states. The objection to the sun parlor is that one gets direct sunlight only during part of the day, whereas the patient who was put out in the open gets the direct sunlight all day long. Certainly, these results warrant medical men in visiting these camps to go over the records, examine the charts, and hear what the patients have to say in regard to the good effects of open-air treatment. This people didn't die in 1918 who were out in the sun that should tell you something so as i said before i hope you learned something from this little video